Welcome to the Elaborators Podcast, Church and Daily Life and Faith Intertwining. That's what we're all about. And we are here, uh, we're getting close to episode 50. I can't remember. We're close. And that's exciting. And I've got some special guests here with me in the studio. They are back. It's been a little while. Pastor Stan and Pastor D, welcome. Hey, special. Hey, hey. Special. Special. Yeah, special yeah, guests, yeah. of course. I think we're, we're beyond oh, special. Yeah. Yeah. You're beyond yeah, special? What's yeah, what's yeah. that? Elevated yeah, above special yeah, or down well, I below? Think, I think that's down below. I, th- I think we're not special anymore. Okay, we've got common folk yeah. here, Pastor Dana <laughs> that's right, down and Pastor Earth. Stan. Um, now, welcome. And producer Simon. And producer, and producer Simon, Simon, here I am. Yeah. Um, and we are today talking about, and you guys, I've given you at least a brief heads up of what we're talking about Ooh. today. Mm. We won't tell everyone. We're, we've got a three-hour podcast today, right? That's it. <laughs> and we knew about it five minutes ago. It's something we know nothing about. No, that's it. <laughs> um, no, no, no. Discount all our, all our listeners and viewers. We know what we're talking about. Yes. We're talking about uh, church bits and pieces. What Church what, bits and pieces. How do yeah, we yeah, assemble yeah. the church? Do you want to give us a bit of a heads up, Stan, on where we're at? Yeah, yeah. Well, we are uh, the the series we're doing is called Assembly Required, and we are navigating the whole book of One Timothy, which is a letter that Paul wrote to a guy he had mentored, a, a young pastor who was pastoring in a church that was in the city of Ephesus, and he was dealing with some some real problems in that church. And Paul writes to him one of the the main themes throughout the whole whole letter. Uh, it's a book in our Bible, but it was actually a letter that he wrote to Timothy, and he said. Hey, I left you there to stop those that are doing the false teaching. I wanted you to call them up on it. I wanted you to shut their mouths, basically. <laughs> you know, you need to put a stop to it. So we started the this, this series in, in the first week. We talked about uh, in like the first 10 verses or so, who are you listening to? Actually, it might have been the first uh, 15 verses. Who are you listening to? Because there's so many people out there who have a camera and a microphone, and they sound like experts because they speak authoritatively. Dennis, like they, is Dennis snickering because we're – here we are. <laughs> exactly. We we are. Are. Wait, we've got three cameras and three microphones, uh, yeah. so we really know what we're talking about. You can trust yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> so, so seriously, we, we are just one of those other voices yep. out there. Uh, so what differentiates what we're saying – and what other people are saying. And we talked about looking at their background, looking at their qualifications, looking at uh, even uh, maybe where they got their training from and their own history, uh, because you can learn a lot about the person before you even listen to what they say, and you can know what bents they're coming from. And they, there's lots of good stuff out there. We live in an age that it is so wonderful uh, to have access to so much teaching out there, and a lot of it's good uh, and things. But there's some people out there with agendas, so and we got to be careful of those. So that's that's where we started. Right, yeah, do, you, yeah. do you want to talk about that before I? Say well, yeah, I'm saying we're, we're creeping we'll, we'll, a little far into the podcast. I did have yeah. a question though. So how does we're, we're saying this t- with this letter is all about um, the the people that make up the church and the bits and pieces. Is that is that different to the what what you commonly hear is the Acts two church or like you know the Acts church? Like what's the church supposed to do? Mm. That was all the early Acts church. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, well this? It, yeah. <sighs> It's that that church that, that's supposed to do things like pray and worship and fellowship and evangelize and disciple and, and all those things together. But it's th- this church is probably 60, 70 years removed from that. And so Paul was addressing some issues that were cropping up in the church. So if we try to look at how we do church, that first Timothy is actually Paul telling Timothy, this is kind of the way you need to be doing church. Go back to the, the the Acts model, but specific stuff that has crept in because the, the, the first church was pure. It was beautiful, and they were just on the heels of Jesus ascending back into heaven and his resurrection. So the, it was simple. And then the yeah. people got involved, and right? Then the people got involved, right, right. And that's what, really what we're talking about through yep. the book of Acts. And it does include everybody. And as we go through the whole book, you're going to see that it talks about women, and it talks about men, it talks about young men and young women and, and just everybody and their gifts and everything and how all those work together. So really that that's kind of the crux of it. So, um, so as, as part of that, um, we know, well, we know there may be people listening that might not, there are rather a lot of types of churches out there. How many? 45,000 flavors. 45,000. Baskin flavors. Robbins has nothing on and, the church. And where did you get that number? I'm curious. I got it off the internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it up, it was like 44,000 plus, but I just, yeah, yeah I didn't see 45. But. So, Deanna, why are there so many? 
Well, I, you know what? I had that question quite a few years ago, Simon, because I'm like, here's the book of Acts. Here's the Bible. Why are there so many denominations? So I did a deep dive um, for about 15 years into church history. That's a deep dive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, it, and they would, it's because people would come at it, theologians would come at it from different angles and have different interpretations on different scriptures and it would split off. I have a personal theory though. Okay. Okay. So you might want to edit this one out because it's my personal theory. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've all just, we've all taken heed of whether we can trust you or not. So we'll take it. Here we go. What I've observed is that sometimes I think, um, you know, churches form around, you know, certain churches appeal to certain types of people. So like people with, um, Maybe the gift more of this, what we would call the sign gifts or charismatic gifts, you know, tend to, you know, section off over here and the more studious ones over here. And, you know, we've got like these different layers. And I used to really struggle with the fact that um, we have churches that are a little bit more legalistic. But if you've got somebody coming um, out of just say maybe a uh, more conservative background from a more conservative country, I'll just say Islam because uh, it's very rigid in its rules and stuff like that um, more often than not, that to go into a, like a super, hey, we're free and everything's great and wonderful and we're having a party might be a little bit much for those kind of people. So I think we need all stripes of the different varieties of churches, mm -hmm. if you will, um, because we're all on a spiritual journey. But that's my theory. <laughs> hey, well, well, something I, I, lo I loved about everything she said, the biggest thing I loved was she said, this is my personal opinion. You know, and when we talk about there's so much stuff out there, if somebody says that, that's really helpful, you know, and you mm -hmm. can, you can actually put some more confidence in <laughs> listening to them. Whereas if they're just saying, this is the way it is, right. you know, and this if anybody, only if, it, it if anybody else is saying <laughs> yeah. anything different then they're wrong. And, yeah. you know, if you get people like that, then that, that's, that's just red flags. You know? So, so how do we then, there's, there's a lot of people out there looking for their church out of 45,000 types of churches. How do you find... Your church. I have an answer. Okay, great. Um, this is why we got you on the podcast. Well, I mean, and, and you know, it kind of ties into what Pastor Nelke preached on this past Sunday, but prayer is such an important part of that because we, we need to ask God, where do you want us? Because um, when we read about spiritual gifts and things like that, and I know that's not what this podcast is about, but he gives, um, gives people the gifts and he puts the people in the churches because that church needs the gift that's there. So sometimes God moves his people around. That's what we've observed. And it's so that their gift can be used in a new context and stuff like that. So we have to trust God in the process. It's not just about you. It's about what God wants to do in and through you. So, yeah. Anyways. Yep. That's my two cents. Right. So it's, <laughs> yeah. So it's, and it's, it's not necessarily us choosing in the sense that we, you're, you're talking about prayer, thoughtful prayer, consideration, mm. God's plan. Do we have any say? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm a free will kind of yep. kind of person, yep. but yeah, no, I think we work with God in that process. And, you know, he sends people across our path. We invite our friends. We, uh, we find something and, and, you know, Stan and I did this when we came to Werribee as in Werribee, the community. And we went to another church for a season and it just wasn't, you know, we thought it was the church for us, but it just didn't. We couldn't, didn't vibe. We couldn't settle. <laughs> So, There's a lot to be said for the vibe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 and and we ended up here, and it's just like we knew. So it's like, no, this is this is where we are supposed to be. So yeah, that's how it kind of worked for us to be here, even. Yeah. So Stan, you mentioned at the start about all of the possible teachers and preachers out there. Is it how do we balance the finding our church? And you know, maybe you can be in a church and it's, everything feels great, the vibes great. Mm. But what if there's something simmering? that's not quite like a little bit off with the teaching or you're not quite confident in this, but it just feels right. Yeah. Well, well, we, we can't just completely go on that feeling. Uh, it depends on what's not quite right because any church that you walk into, if you stay there more than about 10 minutes, you're going to find something that you don't necessarily align with or that you don't love about it, whether it be, the music or whether it be, you know, the greeting, the way they do that, or, uh, you know, so, some churches, uh, uh, every time they'll have all the guests stand up and they'll give them name badges and all those kinds of things. And, and that, that's a surefire way to get people out of your church uh, and they'll never come back again. But some churches are like that. And you might just say, oh, I don't like that. Or Some I don't. people might just not like the right. paint color. 
They might not like the paint color. The exactly. <laughs> right, right. Or, or, or the coffee. We're working on that. You know? <laughs> yep. so, so, some churches here in Australia still do international roast instant coffee. You okay. know? And, and, Stan's and, just and, placed his, his yeah, flag, we'll place in the the ground flag there. Yeah, there. And that, that's, one of the, that's one of those things that if you do that, then you're wrong and you don't need to <laughs> exist. Right. Right. So, <laughs> Stan's lying in the but, sand. But no, <sighs> but, but no you, there will be lines. In, in fact, there, yep. when we first started coming to this church, there were things that uh, we were uncomfortable with. Uh, weren't necessarily um, uh, the exact fit we were looking for, but the church that we were at, we like looked at that and it's like, okay, well, that's got problems too. So which problems do we want to embrace? Which problems can you live with? Which ones uh, are, are showstoppers for you uh, versus which ones? Yeah, that's not my preference, but you know what? That's not a big deal. You know, So you have to decide what are the major things and minor things. And how do you um, discern those? But like, sorry, not the things that you don't necessarily like. How do you discern the, the the false teachings, the risky, the not settled? Does it line up with scripture? <laughs> yep. I mean, that that's the first and foremost thing. It's like, you know, and, and I've heard a lot of preachers take a lot of liberty. And so, I mean, I, I guess there's a personal element to style and, and personality and stuff like that. Um, and some of that is not, I mean, it's tolerable. Okay. I'll give you an example. Do you want an example? Sure. <laughs> Wait, wait, now, you, you have editing privileges later <laughs> on this, right? That's twice so. this has been said with Deanna now. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Um, I, I, I usually tell her, hey, tell me first. <laughs> we had a friend. I mean, back in the back in the day, music was a really hot issue. It probably still is. I don't know. But um, it was in the 90s for sure For the at the church that we happened to be at. Stan was an associate there. And uh, I remember the preacher was preaching through Exodus, right? And he said that when Moses came down off the mountain, the sound of war was rock music. And I'm like... Music that sounds like war is what, is, is, is what the, the text says. Okay, yep. yep. He says that, that's rock music, and it's Christian rock music. Yeah, because they it's were... Like, wow. Yeah. And I'm thinking, wow, that's a stretch. But it was a stretch I could live with because I didn't agree with what was said, and I thought he was you know, stretching things quite a bit. But for the most part, most of his other teaching and stuff, I mean, he had a few quirky things, but that one was uh, kind of out there. But it, you know, we were still able to grow and learn in that church and stuff like that. So I mean, yeah, the the thing that the things that you really want to make sure are right is how are people saved? Mm. Salvation by grace through faith. That's a non negotiable. If they're teaching something other than that, if they're teaching a works based salvation or something like that, that run. If they're teaching that Jesus isn't God, you know that that he was just a prophet or something like that. Again, red flags. Uh, the virgin birth. Uh, I think that one's pretty high up there. Uh, inspiration of Scripture. Beyond that, I think things can get a little bit fuzzy, and there can be a lot of leeway in what you'll put up with, tolerate, you know, um, and things. But but those are really the fundamentals. Those are the core things that if they're not teaching those, then, yeah, it's probably not a place you want to so be. So the, the leeway is often, uh, and it has caused much damage over history in the, d- the debate about that, the things that are in the leeway. Is, <laughs> yeah. is, there, is there such a thing as a meaningless, like, difference, a meaningless controversy when it comes to faith, a meaning, meaningless debate when it comes to things of faith? Certainly. Yeah, yeah, pretty much anything I didn't just list. Right, okay, yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, so, some things are going to have different weights, mm. you know, like all scripture is inspired and all scripture is helpful or profitable. It says that in first Timothy, but it's not all equal. If that, if that makes sense. Um, there, there are things that are, are more important, uh, and things that are less important. Um, so that's what we're talking We're talking about the less important things. Um, and I don't want to go too far because we're going to get into some of these over the next couple of weeks and, right. and I don't want to give that away. Yep. Uh, we'll come back to the podcast and yeah. Um, is, is the meaningless debate still healthy? Ah, you know what? If you're trying to work out something for, for yourself, cause this is the thing, you know, we can <laughs> through the centuries or oh, through the, oh uh, yeah, more than centuries. What's more than centuries? <laughs> Millennia. Millennia. Yeah. yeah. It's a big jump from a yeah, century, but anyway. Yeah. But, um, Theologians on both sides of a lot of different things um, will will have strong, and they can biblically base their opinions, right? Okay, so they're based upon opinions, and they they are sincerely seeking God and studying His Word and coming out on different sides of the the same issue uh, because of interpretive. Yeah, a lot of the mumbo jumbo stuff, <laughs> but um, with uh, with that, 
um, I've even seen some of them flip flop themselves because you know that that's the thing. We are trying to wrap our minds around a holy, infinite, created us God that is out of. I mean, it's He's so much bigger than we are, and so trying to make sense of all that, and we certainly don't want to get it wrong, but we do the best we can to put it together best we can based on the instructions, and that's kind of the whole assembly required thing is that we have to uh, identify. What we feel is scripture, um, what God's saying through scripture, we have to trust the teachers that God has given us. And 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 that's, you know, some of that, the reason it's hard with um, like false teaching is when you go to the internet, you don't know the person on the other side of that camera. You don't see their family. You don't see how they live their life. You don't see them put their faith into practice in any practical way. So I think that, you know, you have to be able to identify with um, your leadership and uh, what you see in their own lives. Are they practicing what they preach? Does it line up with scripture? Is that, you know, who I want to be as a Christian and stuff like that? Some of those are helpful things to put into the equation when you're trying to put it, figure it out and put it together. The thing they were dealing with in the church at Ephesus that Paul was writing about is they were uh, some, some of the people that were the false teachers. The false teaching was at its core. It was trying to take people back into the law. Mm. It's it's uh, instead of living in grace, you have to keep the law. That that's what they were on about, and they would uh, talk about their own spiritual pedigrees, meaning uh, uh, their their uh, ancestry. So they went to ancestry dot com, did an a, a DNA test and all that, so they could prove. And that that's a joke. They didn't have those things back then. While listening uh, to the rock music, right? right. <laughs> While listening to the music that sounds like war. Yeah. And <laughs> and they 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 would say, okay, because I am a descendant of you know, they trace it back as far as they could. Uh, that means I'm authoritative, and you need to listen to me. Yeah. It means I'm right, no matter what. So so he's saying those people are driving meaningless discussions about the law and what laws you should keep, what laws you can get away with not keeping and where are the loopholes. There's over 600 laws in the old Testament mm -hmm. and there was loopholes for every one of them and the, and ways around them and things. So that's the kind of thing that, that Paul was saying, that's just meaningless and it's not helpful. Uh, and, and really what we arrived at uh, in the first week of the series was that you can discern some helpful teaching because it should be causing you to be, love-filled followers of Christ. It should be building mm -hmm. up your faith. If it's not building up your faith, making you more love-filled, if it's making you hateful and mean and arrogant and things like that because you're getting all this knowledge and, and then you want to fight for that position, then again, that's red flags. So so, so when, when people mm -hmm. are church shopping, as we kind of went through the series a little bit, um, the baggage that people have and can bring Either up, like trying to get it across in the sense that it's not, it's not there. They're not bringing it on purpose. There's, mm. there's people that have regrets, baggage sure. that they're trying to approach a new church or just faith in general. And it's like, it's just weighing on them. It stops them moving forwards in their mm. faith. What, what, um, how does that shape how people are trying to like grow in their faith when they've got this feels like they're getting stopped by the regret and the mistakes they've made in the past? Mm. So you're talking about like, past personal regrets. Yeah. That's a tough one. Things I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not worthy to be here or mm. you can't use me because, mm. Mm. or God, you can't use me yep. because, or church, you can't use me because. Yeah. I think, um, I, wasn't it your sermon that you talked about Paul and his, yeah. How, yeah. And that's some of my favorite verses is that he said, you know, uh, it's that whole, but God thing that, uh, you know, Paul had a past, um, a lot of, biblical characters, you look through the whole of scripture, um, had a past or had things that they weren't perfect. And I love that the fact that they're not perfect, God still chooses to use them. So it's that understanding of God's love and grace. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It, we don't have to reach a certain, um, benchmark before we're acceptable in God's eyes. So as a church, we have to realize that as people are on their spiritual journey, um, they're going to be coming with you know, I mean, I mean, I've got my own regrets, you know, I'm not going to tell you what they are, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but, but that's, um, I think that that's true that it's, um, we have to be a loving community. That's what we talked about, striving to be that loving community of acceptance to allow for people, um, that have, you know, sh maybe a shady past and they're working through it. And that's, you, you talked about the, but God moment. And I thought about entitling that sermon, how big is your butt? <laughs> because yeah. your butt's going to be bigger <laughs> if you've got a more sordid past. Sure. Because the but God moment was so massive for you. Mm. But the, the problem 
that most people are, are, are dealing with when they first are exploring church, the church shopping, like you said, and they come in and they feel unworthy or whatever. I would suggest to you it's because historically the church has not been a safe place for that. The church has been a place where if I, it, I'm afraid if I walk in, the ceiling is going to fall in on me or it's going to explode. Or it's going to, you know, God's going to strike the church with lightning because I'm there because I'm so bad. And the church has in some situations or some instances has earned a reputation for being judgmental, for being hateful mm-hmm. and all that, and not accepting people that are like us, <laughs> that, that have a past, that have regrets, uh, but God's grace is bigger than those. And see, so that, that, and that's the, what we're trying to create here. And that's what I want everybody that's even not here and listening to the podcast to understand is that you need to find a church where it's okay to have a past, where they're going to love you exactly how you are with your past, with warts and all, but they're going to love you enough to help you become what God wants you to be. You know, mm-hmm. and that's the driving thing behind it. That, that's why I wake up every day. That's why I do this. I had a lady, uh, and this was since COVID, so it's been in the last year and a bit. Uh, she, I was talking to her in the welcome space, and she says, oh, um, I don't have the right clothes to come to church. And and she looked fine. I don't know why, you know, and, and I'm like, oh, you don't have to dress a certain way to be here or be a certain way to come here. We, uh, I said, you come. No ties are allowed. <laughs> Just, no, I'm kidding. No, we actually well, do have people that show up in ties. There's yeah. another line in the sand for us. <laughs> well, I, I try not to wear holy jeans. My whole, I wear my holier right, jeans holy, holy, that yeah. don't have holes in them um, <laughs> on the platform or whatever. Because, you know, some people are still, you know, they, they think, oh, you should give God your best. And I agree with that and stuff like that. But finding that balance of, you know, trying to make, make people feel comfortable however they want to show up. Um, but also recognizing that some people feel like, you know, that's a really important thing. Certain communities dress up quite a bit for assembly. But anyways, you know, it's it's hard as we put a church together. Where where do we land on all this stuff and stuff like that? I don't know. So, so here's a question then based on that. We were talking, Stan, you're talking a little bit on the, the church acceptance of people with the past. The church as a collective, not necessarily all churches or even just a church. How do, and you can be as blunt as you like, how do, how does the individual get past other people's past? Mm. Other than just get over it, it's not your business. <laughs> I like that answer though. <laughs> yeah. How does okay? So so like my feelings towards what that person did. That did I they know, did they do that to you or no? Not necessarily. Right, right. Well, you need it's just to, I know yeah. about what they did. Yeah. Well. <laughs> And it doesn't that, that, sit that, right. That, that's the whole point. When, when I say we want to be a church where it's safe to come in like that, that, that's not meaning that the pastors accept you. That means that our people, we, we have created a culture, we've created an understanding that except the grace of God, that's us, mm, mm. right? So hopefully we're teaching our people and discipling our people into that. Now, with a church our size, there's going to be people who are still judgmental, who are still going to struggle and, and maybe go, Ooh, you know, whenever they, they run into something. Uh, but hopefully they're on a journey as well. And, and even that judgmental, that's part of their own growth. That's a space they need to grow in. So when I hear about those things, I actually will take that opportunity to lovingly come alongside that person and say, hey, you know, wh- why do you expect that person? A lot of times they're not even a believer yet. Why do you expect them to behaving be behaving like a believer when they don't know Jesus yet? They don't have the Holy Spirit living in them. How can they live differently? So uh, can, yeah. Can I can I uh, <laughs> share a Stan story? Well, actually, oh, I got a, a you couple have to things. Stan that story. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I mean, just what he does. Bleep. <laughs> he, uh, we um, when we first came to Australia, right? We came as missionaries to save you heathen Australians. Can I say that? I'm going to oh say it, but. Add it. <laughs> Blee, blee, blee. <laughs> well, I mean, that was our judgmental, you know, condescending attitude sure. that we had. And we were in McDonald's down by uh, the Vic Market, right? Because we'd take the kids up there and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And there was a group of young junior high age teenagers. And they were like, they, they were talking very colorfully about many things. <laughs> and uh, Stan got really indignant about it because, you know, our kids were there and stuff. And he he gave them a talking to <laughs> You kiss your mama with that mouth. I'm sure that's one of the things he said. And, and I and I pulled him aside. I said, Stan, 
I said, you can't expect people that don't know Jesus to act the way that, you know, and, and honestly, we, we were concerned about the, and then she example. gave me a good talking to. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I just, we, we wrestled with that because things were a lot different here. Cause in, in America, they edit all the language and stuff out of your TV and stuff like that. And we weren't used to hearing it as much as we heard it when we came to a big city. Right. <laughs> But, um, and you know, do those kids need to talk like that? No, but understanding that, you know, people are on a different place in their journey. Um, we did a fundraiser at a church that we were at and it was raising funds for, um, uh, unwed moms. And the whole fundraiser was to, um, collect change and baby bottles and give them a gift at Christmas of, of a card, you know, just to help them out. And one of the uh, church girls, church moms in the church came and she said, why are we doing this, supporting, you know, unwed pregnancies, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, hey, if the church is going to stand against things like, you know, or, you know, be against things like abortion, then we need to support um, moms that get pregnant. But that gentle teaching or coming alongside and helping somebody understand that that's not on that judgy attitude or that, um, yeah, like I'm better than you because, yeah. That, that puts people off, and we don't want to be that kind of church. So mm. so then the final ingredient to what we've talked about so far in the series mm. is prayer and its importance in a, as a foundation. Do you, want to, do you want to recap that briefly, Stan? Yeah, well, uh, last week Pastor Enneke uh, shared with us, and essentially it's the first building block. If we're talking about assembling, uh, this is foundational. And the point was that, we need to start with prayer, and we need to be praying for everyone. And I, I love uh, the the text there where it talks about praying for kings and authorities. Um, and uh, in in doing in doing that, you're going to end up living a quiet and peaceable life. How many people live quiet and peaceable lives? And usually, when we're talking about uh, uh, kings or presidents, prime ministers, and all those things, it's anything but uh, praying for them. <laughs> it's usually uh, roasting them and, and all that. Um, and uh, I actually, in the, in the closing, I challenged people, hey, what if we prayed for them as much as we talk about them, you know, and complain about them? So anyway, prayer is foundational because if, if we're not praying, then we're, we're, God's still going to be doing his work, but we can't, uh, one of the quotes uh, Pastor Nick used uh, was about, you can't measure the uh, impact of prayer. It, it is beyond what, what we can even imagine because we're talking to God, the creator of the universe, sustainer of the universe, and he actually cares about this church being built, the assembling of the church, way more than we do. And I'm pretty passionate about it, but God cares about it more than I do. So if I'm trying to do it without asking him, talking to him of, about that, and without all of us praying, then we're, we're, we're only going to go so far with it because we're going to, it's going to be a man-made thing, not mm. a God-made thing. So, yeah. so in uh, first Timothy chapter two, there's a moment that um, he talks about, I urge you first of all, to pray for all people, ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. The all people part, we were just talking then particular Stan, <clears throat> pardon me, about the leaders. Mm. What does the all people mean in that verse? All people. <laughs> like actually all how much time do you have <laughs> <laughs> now i think pastor and okay addressed it well because I, if i remember correctly what he said he said that people who are different than us or that you know maybe don't fit into our social social circles or our um same beliefs and stuff like that so people that we disagree with or people that were different and it's not the i loved how it, his illustration the get them God when somebody does us wrong kind of thing. Um, but but that, well, that, that's a prayer. Yeah, like it, yeah. Your, your immediate that, reaction is yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you yeah, took that, my car space, God, get them. Right, get them right, God, right, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but no, the reality I is... I hope a shopping trolley hits your car. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't just pray for your friends, but you pray for your enemies too. And I think Jesus had something to say about that in uh, some of his teaching in the Gospels as well. Yeah. So, so what are some... Um, we've covered a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are some of the practical steps. We've covered a little bit of the practical steps. Practical steps that we can we can take that um, everyone feels welcome and included in, even in just in our community mm. or just in general. Like is it is it all three of those things so far? There's obviously coming there's more coming that we'll talk through. What are the what are the practical things that we can do? Um if and this this may fit and it may be coming later. So take that with a grain of salt. But I think that the reality is that you need to to 
own your part, part in your church, that if God has brought you to a place and you've decided to stay there, then you need to be all in and, and be ready to roll up those sleeves and help read those instructions and help put the thing together because it takes all oh, many hands on deck. Wouldn't you say that's true? Mm, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's a massive one. And in, in very practical terms, uh, I would suggest that if people are, if you're in conversations with people and they start talking about the meaningless issues and things like that, that for, for that one, um, then don't just say, Hey, you're having meaningless debates and everything. And I, you need to be quiet and you know, then you're being a jerk just like they are. <laughs> but to lovingly say, wow, you know, those are good questions and everything. But at the end of the day, lots of good godly people disagree about some of those things. So maybe we, we invest more time in praying for those people. If you, if you take the first one and the last one together there mm-hmm. yep. and, and then for the people that are hurting, the people that have the past, um, we, we all have a past and we all have different triggers. And at different times and different seasons of life, some of those things are going to be coming up. Is First of all, if you're hurting and you're judging yourself because of your past, you're feeling guilty, or someone has said something to you and damaged you in the past, then lean into God's grace for that and seek help. Seek counsel from other people. Go, go find a friend in the church community that you can share with and that can love on you and help build up your faith in, in that. And if you uh, are the person who actually you've got regrets and everything and you think you're you're not good enough, you're not worthy, well, I would suggest that you need to process that through the filter that God does and say, hey, God has forgiven me. He's cast my sins, it says in Isaiah, from as far as east is from the west. He's put them in the, in the depths of the ocean. So God's forgiven you for your past. If you can't forgive yourself for your past, you're elevating yourself higher than God. You know, And that's not to judge you for doing that. That's to say, hey, that's ridiculous, isn't it? So rest in that freedom, rest in that grace and that forgiveness that God has given you. I like that. Mm. It's a good spot it's, to finish. Why not? Sweet. <laughs> so, so going into this week then as the end of the podcast, the Pastor Stan's given plenty to think about and do there. And I would also say um, maybe even challenge yourself to go and, um, you know, maybe not just walk up to that particular person that you might have a struggle with, but maybe, maybe it is. Maybe you just need to get to know them. Maybe you need to pray for them. Maybe you need to pray for them. Pray for them and then ask for opportunity. And as you said before as well, go and think about what your role might be in the church. I got to add something here. Go, go, go. You you just said uh, maybe go get to know them. It is much easier to judge someone and condemn someone or or something, some practice that that people do until you know someone Mm. that's actually in that category. When you know someone that fits that category, all of a sudden it's got flesh and bones and everything in a face and a smile. And and you might find out they're actually a decent person other than that thing that you're so worried about. And then you can build a relationship and help through all those things. So, yeah. Something, something splinter in your own eye, right? I was going to say, don't, it's, don't <laughs> think you've arrived. We've got all of us. Those are learning opportunities yep. for each and every one of us. Beautiful. This was fun. Right. That was a good one. We yeah. might do it again sometime. Oh, why not? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I hope everyone got something out of that. Um, you can find the messages that we've been talking about on our website, werebebaptist.org.au or on our YouTube. There are, I don't know, something like 200 messages now on our YouTube channel oh, wow. over the last four or five years or something. Plenty to go through and you can catch up and then stay tuned for, we've got what, four or five more weeks of this series, I think. Lots of yeah, at wild, least four, maybe five. Yep, yep, yep. Wild topics coming ahead. Yeah, oh, so yeah. it's about to get fun. Yep, get ready for that <laughs> one. So we will try and talk about them on the podcast as well. But otherwise, we will see you online or around the place. Have a great week. <laughs>